Hey guys, welcome back to Computational Biology uh, with Python. Uh, in this video, we're going to be uh, looking at BLAST. So you may be familiar with BLAST from the NCBI website, um, which is great if you have just one sequence to BLAST or a couple sequences to BLAST, um, because you just paste your sequence in, select you know your options to customize it and then hit run and it runs on ncbi servers and then it gives you back your results um, but what if you have a bunch of sequences you want to blast or um, you want it as part of a pipeline well we can then integrate it into python um, to make it easier so you don't have to stop your analysis go through it into blast get the results import them into python etc um, or if you have a bunch of sequences you want to blast um, you don't have to paste one after another etc so um, let's Take a look at Blast. So anytime I, I think of Blast, I don't know if there's any, it's always sunny in Philadelphia fans uh, out there. And I didn't want to, I was gonna play the clip, but then I was like, oh, then I'm gonna get a copyright claim. Uh, but Danny DeVito, so anyways, I started blasting. Uh, meme, it's fantastic. Good show if, if you're into that kind of humor. All right, um, so let's open Python, a new notebook. Um, let's save it as last. Okay. Um, so, oh, we also have to, since, uh, new launcher, I need to, uh, install BioPython quick. Any day now, terminal. So for those of you not familiar with BLAST, um, BLAST is a way to take an unknown sequence and compare it to a database of, um, sorry, I can't type in, type in talk. I uh, compare it to a database of known sequences to give you a rough idea of what that sequence is. So for example, you find a new species of snake and it has this gene of interest in the species. Well, the genome hasn't been sequenced for the snake because it's a new species. And you wanna know what this interesting piece of DNA does. You can take that, you can blast it. Okay, so first thing I want to uh, save my notebook as blast. I'm gonna say it was blast two because I had a bunch of errors the first time I tried to make this video, so I already have a blast one. But you can just say it was blast. Um, okay, first thing from bio.blast import ncbi www. Then ncbi www.email equals um, and I'm going to put in um, my personal, well, this is my school email, but a proxy for it. Um, and so just to show you, um, NCBI, you can log in and sign up for an email. So then if there's anything that goes wrong with your analysis, they'll email you, or if you're running a long analysis, you can leave and it will tell you when it's done and, and things of that nature. Um, so now let's result handle. Um, so say you have a, can't talk in type, you blast. Um, Last n so nucleotides, nt for nucleotide, and then we put this number in eight three three two one one six. So say you're on NCBI's website, oh, ncbi.com, um, and you want to find you have a gene that you're looking for. So uh, BRCA one, uh, the breast cancer gene. Um, so you can see it has this ID number, this gene ID number, 672 here. Um, you could put that number in um, or any other, you know, we have different, we have it, BRCA1 in mouse is 12189. Um, let's look up what would, what's 8, 
332116 was the number that we put in. Um, <laughs> one discontinued or replaced item. So um, this. So what happens sometimes is if they determine that there's duplicate records, so it was described as one gene is this, but then they find it's a different gene, they'll combine records, so they'll re-annotate and things like that. So this number is, is not very useful for uh, 833211, yeah. Um, but anyways, um, so that's, um, you can put in those numbers if it's already annotated on um, NCBI. Um, what did I do wrong here? Uh, the Q blast. Oh, there we go. Okay, um, but what if you have something that you um, want to blast, like you sequenced something? So we're going to use this file um, from um, the BioPython GitHub page. Um, so this is a FASTA file for uh, cold acclimation protein. So you can go to raw here, right click, save as. Um, I say it as mcold fasta. Um, yes. And then upload, downloads, mcold fasta. Um, and then I want to, you probably want to rename it, right? Rename, get rid of the txt. Um, okay, so now we can do from bio import seek io and then record equals seek io dot read read our mcold fasta file and tell them that the format is a fasta um, and now we can do print record oh okay so another thing while this is um, the blast function, because you are taking a sequence, you're sending it to a remote server, the NCBI server, you're comparing it to every sequence on NCBI, which is, you know, tons of sequences. That's not, no, it's somewhat true. Um, it depends on how the query structure and things like that. But anyways, it takes a long time, is what I'm trying to get at. Um, and so, this you can see here we have this star this means it's running um so if we have a number like one two i must have deleted one or i don't know why two is missing three and this should be four if it has a number it's done if it is a star it's either in process like with this blue line uh, right here means this is in process or it's queued to run it's been asked to run um so you can keep typing in Python or in the Jupyter Lab, um, but these won't run until the things above it run, which is nice because sometimes if you're just on a roll and something's taking a long time to run and you hit command to run it, um, you don't want it to not have the inputs it needed from the line above, right? If that makes sense. So, um, so this will take a second. Um, and then we should finally get to a print record. Um, so I guess I'll just pause here while it's running. Okay, now that this is run, we should be able to uh, go through our read in with seek.io read mcold fasta and then print the record. And you can see this is our fasta record here, which makes sense because if we look at my where is it? Um, cold Fasta. Uh, this is the sequence, so it's truncated, um, but we're good to go. Okay, so now what we want to do is <laughs> take our time again. So result handle equals ncbiwww.qblast. We're going to blast the M cold Fasta instead of that eight. Three three two one one six uh, file. So this um, 
this was an example. This is if you had the gene ID number um, and it's already on CBI. If you have a FASTA file that's not on CBI or you don't know, um, like say you just sequenced it yourself, um, you can load it. This is loading your own file locally. Um, so that's what we're doing. So now we're gonna blast this and it's gonna take some time. So I'm gonna let this run and we'll be right back. Okay, now that it's run, we can do with open, oops, m cold fasta w as out handle out handle dot write result handle dot read and then result handle close. So we're going to use a result handle uh, results. We're going to read them in um, and write uh, our result handle and then close our connection to the NCBI search. Perfect. Okay. Um, so now we have it. Uh, we're going to save it as an XML file. So bio last import and cbi xml result handle we're going to reopen our result handle we're going to open my blast.xml perfect blast record equals ncbi xml read result handle. So now we're going to read in our result handle that we saved up above. And now we can kind of parse through it. So e value thresh. So we're going to look at only um, P value significance or E value significance of 0.04 and higher um, in our results. So for alignment in the last record alignments, so we're going to write a loop to go through um, for HSP and alignment HSPS. Um, if HSP that expect is less than E value thresh so if our e value um, for our alignment or significance of our alignment is less than our threshold so less than 0.04 uh, we'll print an alignment this is just kind of a banner uh, for us I'll uh, print sequence And then, so this is like a title, we'll print alignment title, we'll print length. So we're doing this to make it um, more readable for the end user or us in that case. Um, length, alignment length, oops, dot length, print the value. HSP expect print HSP dot query. We'll print the first 75 uh, letters. Oops. Print HSP match. Or so we'll pick the matching 75 letters. So the first was our, our query, right? So those ones we searched. Oops. Oh, I missed one. Uh, print HSP subject zero through 75 plus. Oh, I did it again. Plus. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, so now let's run and look at it. All right, so this we have our alignment, we have our sequence, which was the um, 
our query. Um, or actually, no, this is our what we aligned to. We have the length, we have the E value, we have our query sequence, um, and then we have our um, subject sequence, and then the matches, the lines, all these that match. And then for the loop, it goes to the next one. If it's below 0.04, it says, okay, um, this is the other cold regulated gene for um, Spinacea oleraceae, uh, et cetera. And so it goes all the way down. So we get all the 0.04s, which is quite a bit, right? Um, yeah, so that is generally it. So we could write this to file too. We're not going to um, for our cases. We'll just leave it in here. Um, but you can see, so the most likely alignment is with the lowest E value, right? So most likely our M protein, uh, M cold protein is uh, chemopodium uh, quinoa cold regulated 413 plasma membrane. Yeah, so that's how you run blast. And you can see we can run uh, just the same way that we did a, a loop like this. We could run a loop um, to run different protein uh, or different FASTA sequences on NCBI to search for them. But be careful, there are some like rules with NCBI. You'll have to look into um, like how many searches you can do a minute and things like that. So you might have to put like delays in your loop. Um, but it's easy to do if, if once you've learned all these things that we've been working on. Um, so that is it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this lecture. It was a bit of a pain for me to make. <laughs> I, I just stuff happened. Um, but that's generally how you blast uh, using the remote NCBI servers. And so there is a bit of a waiting period uh, because of of hooking up to the remote servers, you know that we had that star sitting there um, on our uh, Python script where it was waiting to run and I delayed the videos um, or cut away because I wasn't just gonna sit here and try to fill the space and talk. So yeah, um, if you're watching on YouTube, please hit like, please subscribe. I appreciate you watching and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.